don't know. All right, so um, this topic we're going to talk about sponsor ads a bit, and just kind of to understand the logic behind using them and how to use them. Um, there's a lot of good you can do with them, but it's it it's tricky to get it right because anyone can just create a sponsor ad, just leave it, and then it can either work or it won't work. Um, but usually, you want to spend time and update the ads as time goes by, and you want to keep you know changing it just to make sure you're optimizing it. So I like to run ads for slow moving products. That's just what I do with our inventory. Typically, because when we do um, arbitrage, we're looking to buy things that are going to sell relatively quickly anyway. So things generally shouldn't be staying there too long, but in case there's a bad buy or there's just a, things that didn't move as planned, I want to bring traffic to those products. Now, other, other um, people would use sponsored ads for private label products or for listings that they've created um, just so they can bring traffic and get some you know, get themselves on the front page on Amazon. So when people search certain keywords and search terms, then they'll show up on the top of the page if they're willing to do so. <clears throat> so the way we create sponsored ads is pretty easy, at least on Seller Central. The, the easiest way is if you go to advertising and click on campaign manager, you'll see a orange button that says create campaign. And then basically just follow through this little page. Let's just name this test campaign advertising campaign manager it's the, it's the first in the drop down bar this is the topic sponsored ads sponsored ad and we go to advertising campaign manager and then you'll you'll click on create campaign <clears throat> so i'm just going to name this test campaign and you need to set a daily budget so Typically, you won't reach that daily budget only because, on average, the, the cost per click is relatively low. So the way the sponsored ads worked is you enter a bidding war on these keywords and search terms. And you say, I'm willing to spend, let's say, 50 cents per click maximum. So if you set a daily budget of a dollar per day, you'll be able to get up to two clicks a day. If and only if the keywords are 50 cents. Now, the reason why you're not going to always hit your daily budget is because your maximum 50 cents doesn't always mean you're going to be paying 50 cents for the click because it's a bidding war. If, if Amazon decides that the search term, let's say, for um, women's shoe is 20 cents and <clears throat> anyone who's using women's shoes as a keyword or search term in their advertising campaign is now bidding for this slot, it may jump up to 30 cents and whoever wins by the time it ends, you'll pay the 30 cents for that. It doesn't always have to go to your maximum. So I'm just going to, yeah, just let me, let me first thought real quick. So I'm going to set a $5 minimum, which is, which is pretty, pretty fine because I don't expect to hit this. And usually if you have more products in the campaign, you want to have a higher, higher daily budget also because you, if you, the more products you have, the more products are going to be competing and they're going to be entering this bid war. So you'll have more chances to get these. Now, one thing I'm going to preface before any questions, sorry, um, is that you only pay when somebody clicks on the ad. So when the ad runs and you win the bid, even if you're willing to spend $1.50 on this keyword, if, the, if that impression runs and nobody clicks on it, you're not going to pay. So the daily budget, even more so, is harder to get to unless you have a lot of products or very, very, um, I guess, in-demand keywords. So you do this for all the products that you want to advertise? Yeah. So I would do this for products that are either slower moving or things I want to bring more traffic to or get them to move more quickly, whether it be a private label product or just slow moving items or just a new product on Amazon. Okay, so if you have a lot of shoes, like say the product, how much shoes do you want to do? Like, okay, that I can update. Like 10, 20? So I would, if you have a lot of shoes, I would create, this is the way I would do it, and I'm going to go through this in the next step. Um, the first thing I would do is select automatic targeting. And a very, very common practice with doing sponsored ads is that you do an, an ad campaign automatic targeting, which means Amazon will choose the keywords relevant to the product based on um, you know, this, the, the product page and similar products to it. And then you can run reports down the line and see which keywords performed well, which ones did, did poorly, and which ones had stronger results. And then you can create later a manual targeting campaign using the keywords that worked and then making variations off of those. Where, where do you find 
in from the automatic, I'll, I'll go through after you can run advertising reports and you can download what's called a search term report, which will give you um, a list of search terms that Amazon used for those products and they'll tell you how many impressions it ran, how many clicks were there, what the percentage click through rate, so how many people clicked divided by the number of impressions, um, how much you paid for it, how many sales came from those clicks, and if so, what was the ratio of, of, of sales val um, sorry, dollar value sales versus amount you paid. So if you paid $10 to get $3 in sales, that, that doesn't work because yes, you got some sales, a sale out of it maybe, but you paid more in advertising. Whereas maybe if you paid $2 and you generated $50 in sales, that's an incredible keyword to use. You create a manual. Key I would also keep the ad campaign running the automatic one because if overall you're still, I'll get to the, the ACOS in a second. If overall you're not spending too much and you're generating sales, you could, there's no reason to pause it. You can still create a manual campaign on top of that and try to get more sales. But the main idea is if you're getting sales, um, it's doing its job. So you may as well, you could just leave it. Now, yeah. Yeah, that's correct. So the, the ads will, the impressions will only run if you're in the buy box. So as if you're not competitively priced or if you're not, if you're only selling it above MSRP and you're in maybe a suppressed buy box, the ads just won't run because the whole idea for the sponsored ads is so a customer can just see this, click on it, and add to cart, and buy. If you're not in the buy box, you're advertising for another seller, or it's a suppressed buy box, in which case the customer won't be able to just hit add to cart and then purchase it. Yeah, I, I, but I would check it. Yeah, only if it's not selling. If things are selling, you may as well just leave it. So, I, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because if you're already in the buy box, why do you have to do sponsored? You only want to do it if there's items that are not selling quickly or they are not selling or maybe have not sold but in a certain time frame. You cannot do this if you are not in the buy box. You can only run ads if you're in the buy box. If the, you could only run if you're in the buy box. Yes. Now, my question is, why do you still have to run campaigns when you are already in the buy box? It's not to get you in the buy box, it's to get customers to see it because maybe some of Maybe they're not searching for the product. Oh. So I'll, I'll show an example of what it looks like. If you go to Amazon.com, and I'm just going to search for, um, oh, what's that? you'll see on the top, well, this is what's called a headline search ad. Um, this is only if you have a brand registered. So this is sponsored by Maybelline. But if you scroll down, these sponsored here, these are the sponsored ads. So Maybelline and Elizabeth are competing against the, the search term lipstick. And whatever, right now, no one's paying anything because I'm not clicking on it. But the second I click on it, it's going to charge them however much they're willing to bid or however much the auction went up to until this ad ran. But the keyword lipstick is generic. Yes, it's a, it's a broad term it's lipstick. A, it's, a, it's a generic. This one is. I don't know what they use. I don't have access. Well, I, with, with tools, I can have access to that. But currently, I don't know. As, a, as, a, as an example, do we use generic? Terms you would use either generic or, or very specific. Keyword. That would come into the manual targeting. I'll talk about that after. So in manual targeting, you can have, there's three main types, four main types of, of uh, search terms. There's broad, phrase, and exact. I guess I'll talk about it now. Yeah, <laughs> um, it. Yeah. yeah, so broad means that if you search here, like lipstick is a good example of broad. I searched the word lipstick. They may have done lipstick as a broad campaign, but what if I search lipstick um, for teens or something? I don't know. Um, you may see the same ads run. I'm not at the moment, but it's possible that the ad would run because using a broad um, term lipstick, it, I can have any words or any combination of words as long as lipstick are in the search term. If I do phrase, at, let, let's say I used exactly lipstick for teens as my keyword, someone would have to search these words in this order, but not limited to those words. So someone could have searched red lipstick for teens, and then my ad would still pop, probably run because I had this phrase, lipstick for teens, in there. Um, if I did exact, they would have to search these exact words in this exact order with nothing more, nothing less, and that would be your keyword. So there, there's good reason to use any, any combination of those types of, of search terms, but only after, I would say, you run an automatic campaign and get the data of which keywords provided the best result, and then you can say, well, these search terms did well, let me make a manual campaign using these ones and I'll do phrases and exacts to maybe target those customers more so that you, you don't, so you weed out people that are searching things that are kind of irrelevant. The fourth type of targeting is called negative keywords, 
where you can say, well, I don't want people, my product to show up when people search these words. And if you put a negative keyword in there, anytime someone searches that word or phrase or exact keyword type, um, you will not have it run. So you can try to weed out your competition or read up the ads that way. If they search for the word and it's related to your product and you put it to a negative keyword, you can make it so that you don't want it to come you don't want your product to run when they search that word. Even if it's, it's just, if you have, it's, it's hard to explain. <laughs> right, right, exactly, yeah. So you'd eliminate that. So going forward with the automatic targeting, when you create it on, on Seller Central, you have the option initially to create an ad group. You can only create one first, but you can create as many as you want to. An ad group works to serve um, <clears throat> targeted keywords for a group of products. So if I have ad group one, let's, let's say I name this test. Um, here, the first thing I see is, is, is little bra company. Let's assume I wanted to do an ad just for the little bra company. I can search by product name, skewer ASIN. So I can search in my inventory <clears throat> for that brand, let's say. And then I can select the ones that I want it to run for. Just takes some slow sometimes, but the the idea here is that you can do a campaign with a lot of products in it. But if the products aren't similar and you're doing automatic, Amazon will have trouble determining which keywords to use and which ones to apply them to. Because if you have a campaign that has bras, clothing, toys, this and that, and you're choosing automatic targeting, Amazon's going to choose keywords for maybe the first ones they pick on, or I don't exactly know what their their um their method is, but it's not going to be optimized for it. But if you have an ad group for a specific type of product or a specific brand, all the keywords that get chosen in that automatic campaign will apply to all the products in the ad group because all the products in the ad group are very similar. So if I take, let's just select all the on this page, for example, 90 pounds. A lot of these are probably out of stock, actually. Um, what is that guy for putting a name in the ad group? Just for your tracking. Because if you have more than one ad group, you can click on the data. You can, I'll, I'll show you. You can, you can click on the ad group and view the information on the Seller Central page. So if you have more than one ad group, you can say, oh, this is this one, this is this one. I'll, I'll create a second ad group in a second. Yes. What I normally, what I try to do sometimes even further than that is I'll break down women's shoes into subcategories of boots versus like sandals or flats or um, dress pumps. I'll do separate ad groups for it, but I'll do one campaign just because it's easier to manage. You can do you can do separate campaigns if you want to. There's nothing against that. So here I'll sh I'll show. Here, here's my test campaign. This is my ad group, Little Bra Company. I'm gonna do a default bid of fifty cents just for now. Save and finish, and it's gonna take these thirty items I added and put them into the campaign. So it'll show them all. Test campaign. So here I have the test campaign start date here. I didn't put an end date, and I have my daily budget here. And you see here how much you spent total, orders, sales, and ACOS. I was gonna I was gonna talk about this earlier. So the ACOS is the advertising cost of sales. You can kind of think of it as an ROI. It's how many basically here. Yeah, it's a good way of explaining it. You spent four dollars on advertising results, uh, twenty dollars in sales. Your ACOS is twenty percent because you spent four dollars or you spent you got twenty dollars. That. You spend four dollars and you generate twenty dollars in sales, which is which is twenty percent. So four over twenty is twenty percent. Um, advertising cost of sales. So you want to be under thirty percent is at least the the target you want to be at because anything above that, when you get to like fifty percent or hundred percent, in this here's a good example. You're, we paid two hundred five dollars to generate two hundred eight dollars in sales. You just basically broke even on that. So that's an example of a campaign that's not doing well. 32% is pretty solid because we spent $25 to generate $80 in sales. Granted, it was one order, but it still paid for itself because if I'm only running ads for slow-moving inventory, this is directly translating to getting the products to sell. So we spent a little bit, so it reduced our bottom line on this, but it's better than having it just sit there forever and then eventually incurring long-term storage. Um, so for the test campaign, here's our one ad group. So it shows the same information, how many ads, which is products you're using, impressions, clicks, CTR stands for click-through rate, so it's the percentage of clicks to impressions, spent is how much you spent, order, sales, it's ACOS, same thing. So I can create another ad group just by clicking this. 
So if I want to add, let's say, a different, let's say, a different brand, I can now just do, let's say, Wacol. And I can search for Wacol. It's all the wrong. And then add products into that campaign that way. And I can do a different um, default bid per click on that. And then whatever it is, I'll just add these three. And, it, and, and typically, if there's, if there's a, um, a common, or not a common, a popular product, Amazon, or at least a popular keywords that Amazon will recommend, they'll give you a default bid based on the, re the uh, average range or the bid range for these types of products. So they're saying you should do 43 cents because the range goes from 5 cents to 85 cents. So like I was saying before, because you want to hit your daily cap, you can say 43 cents, but anywhere between 5 cents and 85 cents, you can, you can win the the bid, just depending on who's competing at that time or when they run that auction, essentially. So, if you're in the campaign, you can see the two different ad groups and any which, any which one. And I like having ad groups too because you can do bulk actions on them. You can you can pause an ad group if you want to. You can you can you know monitor how much you're spending on it, and it's easier to manage, in my opinion, when you have it broken into subcategories. Plus, the daily budget applies to both of these. So it's going to be a combination of these two. So you can say, well, I'm going to spend X amount on this type of product and then break it into subcategories so you can optimize the keywords and you don't have to have multiple daily budgets to monitor multiple different ca campaigns. That for this. That's more why I do it. It's easier to manage and less to, to switch between. Um, so you can do negative keywords. Um, Campaign settings, uh, you, you can edit things here if you want to as well. But that's the way to at least create a standard campaign through, through the automatic targeting. But now let's create a campaign through manual targeting. So I do to create campaign. I'll call this test campaign 2. I can spell. I'll do the same thing, daily budget $5. I already named something like this, sorry, sorry five, 3. And let's do manual targeting. So let's choose the same products. So I'm just going to take the first three or four products here instead of selecting all. And you can do a default bid, 50 cents. And they, they recently came, came um, added this bid plus which will raise your bid automatically um, if you enable it, and it'll go up to 50% more than your default bid. So I'll add up to 25 cents to this if, if you need to. So I've been playing with that a little bit. But Amazon will give some suggested keywords here. Based on the products you chose, they'll take information from what you chose and say, hey, you should use these keywords, because that's what they would have chosen for your keywords. You can search for you know, the brand or specific size or a generic keyword. Um, if you don't want to use their suggested, you can also just provide your own, where you can enter one per line here. So I can say, um, let's say, and you can add as many as you want with one kind of match type at a time. So I can add two of these as broad, and then I can click this and do phrase, and then I can say, um, same kind of an idea, do a phrase of a specific kind of thing, um, or exact. And then you can add those keywords, and then they'll give you the recommended bid for each of those keywords. So it's going to be more customized for each keyword rather than just doing a default bid on the automatic campaign, because the automatic campaign um, is just applying whatever you, you want to specify to every single keyword that Amazon chooses. So if I hit save and finish, it'll take us to the same next page where it shows us the ad group. Um, which is better, the manual or the automatic? It, it so it depends which is better because manual is typically going to be better if you're getting information from the automatic because you have more control over it and you can weed out the bad keywords. But that doesn't necessarily mean that automatic is going to be bad either and doesn't always necessarily mean that your manual campaign is going to work because you want to make sure you're choosing the right keywords. I can do a manual campaign and choose all the wrong keywords and wrong search types and have it in my ACUS be over 200% and then 
it really just depends on what you're what you're doing with it, which is why I, it's an it's a process. It's not just you set it once and then let it go. You want to set it and then update it as time goes by. And that especially applies to private label products because you want to make sure you're getting the right keywords and the right customers and the right um, demographic that you're, or at least the right people that are searching for these words rather, um, to bring traffic to your product. So the only difference between this page here for the manual campaign is when you click on the ad group, you have the option to look at the keywords and you can add more and um, do negative as well. But you can also pause specific keywords as well. So if you see if there's a keyword that say, let's say this keyword because it's too broad, you know, there's a lot of, it's, it generates a lot of impressions and a lot of clicks, but it's not translating to sales. You can pause that keyword or lower the amount you're, you're, you're paying for it or want to pay for it just so it won't impact the total campaign as much. So I can say, well, this is a bad keyword, let me pause it. Or this is a good keyword, let me put more spending. Let me put my, click my um, bid higher, because maybe I'll get more um, sales out of it. This is a great example, because the, the range is from up to 46 cents, so you're probably not going to go higher than that. But here's a better one, where it goes up to $1.23. Well, if this is performing really well, has a, has a lot of impressions, a lot of clicks, very low ACOS, you want to maybe ramp up this the spending on this. Maybe go to the max that they recommend so you'll win more of those um, ad spaces to get more potential clicks as well. So you have a lot of customizable um, things you can do with the manual campaigns um, as opposed to the automatic campaigns. So I'm, I'm hoping these are going to work because last time I tried the advertising reports they didn't work on my computer. But if you go to the advertising reports and go to search term report, this is where you can download the data to Excel to look at specific campaigns and say, well, which ones are working, which ones aren't working. Okay, so it is working this time. So it'll tell you how many impressions it ran, how many clicks it generated, how many people clicked on it, sorry, um, how many people purchased it from those clicks, and you can figure out which keywords are working, which ones aren't, and then you can take and just copy and paste those keywords into the manual campaign based on your criteria. So you can say, I want only keywords that have an ACOS under 30% or under 20%. You can sort the Excel sheet by ACOS under 20% and then see for that campaign which, those, which keywords fit that criteria and see how many sales it generated and then say, let me do a manual campaign. I'll spend more per click on these and I'll do maybe just these keywords and maybe do a phrase or an exact or do slightly varied versions of these keywords. Um, so that's the general mindset for sponsored ads, um, and basic way to create. I'll, uh, there's, I'll take a few questions, because I think we're, well, we started a bit late, so we have like five minutes. Now, um, once you start the automatic campaign, how long do you wait before you run this report, and then create the manual based on the results of that automatic? I would say two weeks, two but weeks. that also depends on the type of campaign you're running. Okay. Like if you're doing it for private label product, you want to make sure you get the best results out of it. So you want to run, have it run, to, so Amazon has time to, you know, it has time to get traction, has time to get more optimized keywords that Amazon chooses. Okay. Um, so you have more results. Because um, anything sooner than that, you're just going to be jumping the gun with, with not enough information. For if you're doing it for slow moving products, um, you can do it at, really at any time because you just want to get traffic to the products. Okay. Or for products that are, are like arbitrage maybe. I guess I'll just show this report real, really quick, the search term report. I'm just going to open it. I would, I, I typically haven't done manual campaigns for slow moving products unless I had a specific brand in mind. Because otherwise, if I'm just doing a, a, you know, like women's shoes, for example, it's so broad and there's so many different types of products, I'm not going to sit there and go through the report for women, my women's shoes automatic campaign and look to see, well, these keywords work for this one, because it doesn't tell me which products it applied to, necessarily. Um, so, in that case, if you have a lot of products... I'm sorry, what was the question? When do you have to show up? When people search on a search term, it shows up on the front page. Either the, either the top or the side. I showed it earlier. I guess you're out of the room at the time. Um, but here's an example. Um, so, I search lipstick, and we have these sponsored here. So I searched lipstick, so Maybelline is, is using, either bidding for the word lipstick or some variation of it. So this showed up on the front top of the page. This is, this is slightly different. This is a headline search ad, which is um, a separate type of campaign, which is only for um, brand-registered products, where you can put 
like products together and it shows all the variations and you can click on this shop now and it'll take you to a special page that just show these products. Yes. The size and colors don't matter because the campaign, no one's search, well, people are searching for specific sizes, but if you do, but they're searching for, let's say, shoes for women than this size, or they're searching for just, they're not always searching for size nine and a half this. And if they are, if it's doing broad keywords, it'll still be included because they're not just searching nine and a half, they're searching women's shoe nine and a half or something. So it's, it'll still run. So the different variations don't matter. The things that do matter in terms of targeting is what type of product it is. So I don't want to have boots in the same campaign as flip-flops because Amazon's going to choose keywords for one of them and then the other ones are just going to sit there and nothing's going to happen. Yeah, but, but shoes, it's, uh, it's varied. It's uh, different kinds. Mm -hmm. how, how do you run ads for such? I just group things together as, as closely as I can. So I'll run ads to be with specific types of products just because I know that the keywords are going to at least apply to all of them. Um, and, and really quickly, I want to show one more thing. A good way to find out which products are slower moving is the inventory age report, which if you go to inventory, click on inventory planning, then click on inventory age. And this is also how we look at long-term storage on Seller Central. You can see which products are, you know, how many you have available, how many units sold in the past 90 days, and you can look at this and say, well, inventory pl planning, inventory age. So if I sort units sold low to high, I look at all the items that haven't sold units in the last 90 days, and these are my slow-moving products. So I want to say, well, let me do an advertising campaign for this. So Amazon gives recommendations here to say you should advertise or edit listing or create a sale or do this and that. But realistically, you can probably do ads for any of these if, if it's worth it. Like, I'm not going to run an ad for this probably because it's probably selling yeah, $4.95. Bringing traffic to this with an, a campaign is just going to kill all its profits already because it's already at five dollars but like here's a good example you have one shoe been in stock well only zero to 90 days so i wouldn't run this just yet but here's another one this has been in stock for 90 to 180 days hasn't sold a unit in 90 days i'd probably run an ad campaign for this or i'll look for this brand and see what else i have in stock for that and run it for these so oh, the age, if it's uh, over a mile <laughs> I wouldn't say a month. I think a month is too soon to run ads unless you're buying products that are supposed to move quickly because in general, shoes and clothing, you, we expect the shoes to sell more slowly anyway. So I would say if there's maybe over three months or if there's no sales at all um, for the product, then you can run ads. But one month time may be too soon because you know, if you're not in the buy box the entire time, um, maybe it's just uh, there's a lot of variation on the page. There's a lot of variables. So... Let's just assume you have one product that you're the only seller on, and there's no other, um, and you're in the and you're in the buy box 100 percent of the time, and there's no sales in the last 90 days, and it's been live for maybe or maybe 30 days. That's an example where you can look at it. But typically, when you're doing arbitrage, there's competition, there's variations, there's, um, you know, how how much you're sharing the buy box. Those all take into effect as well. So you can run an ad for that product, but but if you're not in the buy box, it's it's not even going to run for you. So it's not going to it's going to say it's ineligible. So it won't even let you run their ad because you're not in the buy box yet. So, you have to get you have to match the buy box price to get at least to if it's not selling because you're in the buy because you're not in the buy box, but it has a good sales rank and there's not really variations on it. Getting the buy box is the best way to get that to sell, obviously, but you'd have to lower your price in, in that case. If you if you are matched, if you run an ad campaign, at the very least, you're probably sharing the buy box a percentage of the time, in which case if you run the ad, it'll just run a smaller percentage of the time, which can still bring traffic to it. But if it's a, if it's a good selling item in general and you're just not in the buy box, either there's too, many comp too much competition or your price isn't competitive enough. The ads won't really help that unless you're in the buy box. Um, I, you want to answer this before I mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I've never run a sponsor ad for something where I share the business name mm -hmm. because I didn't, you know, I, I want to sell it. Right. So are you saying that the sponsored ad will only run during the time of my business and the buy box? Yes. Interesting. I think I have yeah. to 
because because they, they don't want to have you pay for your customers, your, your competitors. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So it won't even it won't even give the option. It'll it'll say. I'll try to find one that. Yeah, let's say this one. It'll say ineligible. Oh, okay, never mind. This is a bad example. <laughs> um, this is out. Of, I don't even recall these, but it'll say ineligible because you're not in the buy box, or it's sometimes your offer is not eligible for advertising. I don't exactly remember what the reason for that is. I've seen this happen before. These I know are just out of stock. We recalled them from long-term storage. So. Not necessarily, but that's not gonna that's not gonna mean anything for this. This is the the ad specifically is maybe there's something preventing it. Like I guess maybe because these are out of stock, maybe this isn't showing up. But it's not eligible for pressing because we're not in the buy box. Because I don't think anyone's in the buy box. I don't think anyone has this in stock anymore. Yeah, no one has this in stock. What do you mean by impression? Impression is when the ad runs. So when I searched lipstick and we saw those campaigns on the top, that's an impression. So once I click on it, that's when it charges the whoever is running that ad. 